Back to the opposite vision, back to uh, Niels Bohr. I was surprised at how, at some level, he is ultra common sense realist. Doesn't he repeatedly say, all that we can observe, all that exists out there is our common reality. Everything that we measure, it shows on a screen with measuring apparatus in our common reality. So he insists that all these wave function formulas and so on, they have no ontological status in the sense that we have to presuppose another type of reality. He insists that it simply, and here he escapes, I think, too easily into some kind of naive epistemologies. And he says, these are just our mathematical means, formulas, or sometimes he even says language, symbolic fictions, to account for how did we come from A to B. But both A and B are firmly here. So does he ever try to make a step further? I know I will be very precise here. I'm not, I am bluffing, but not substantially, because what would then in this view prove, uh, I of course follow this with fascination, the, uh, this year, you remember, the three guys, the old friend one, Alain Aspect, and the Zeilinger, an Austrian man, and the third one is American, I think, or whatever, no. Uh, uh, what did they really prove? Isn't nonetheless in what they say a little bit more realist tendency, that in some sense there must be a level of reality, which work reality, whatever you call it, out there, that works in a different way from our ordinary reality. Another thing, uh, usually what they did is, with these experiments, is usually read as Bohr's victory against Einstein. But isn't it more complex? Because uh, they didn't prove that there is no that there is pure contingency, no. They only proved that if you go to particle A, this, then the correlated particle B down up, but this only means that there is no link at the level of speed of light or lower. There still can be a link at a higher level, higher, okay, outside, no? Exactly, that's exactly right. Um, Bohr has his, you know, I, I don't read a lot of Niels Bohr. He's famously hard to understand, but he has his modern uh, avatars, right? There are people alive right now who very much think that reality does not pre-exist our measurement outcomes. And as, as you imply, Einstein, as well as Schrodinger for that matter, were very much on the other side. They were very much physicalists, uh, materialists. They wanted to see the mechanisms behind what was going on before we made our observations. The problem that they had, as you're pointing to, is that they had a, you know, Einstein invented relativity. <laughs> he thought that space-time was very fundamental and the speed of light was absolute. So what he pointed out in the famous EPR paper, Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen... Oh my God, that's even... That I know mechanic, that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But maybe the audience doesn't, so I'm trying to be careful. Um, you know... Quantum mechanics seems, he said, to be incomplete with any kind of underlying theory that would take locality seriously. The idea that not only is there space and time, but things that exist have locations in space and time, and things that interact do so at the same point of space and time. And Einstein says quantum mechanics seems to be incompatible with that. And John Bell proved a theorem saying... Yes, <laughs> it truly is incompatible with that. And then uh, the people who measured their correlated photons, their entangled photons, Aspe, Clauser, and Zeilinger, uh, verified that Bell was correct, that you cannot reproduce the predictions that we observe in the real world with any naively locally realist theory. But so only locally, either. No? Only locally. It must be local. Only theory. locally, exactly. So even the 
amusingly, even the Nobel Committee got this wrong in their press release. They said that these experiments ruled out hidden variable theories, but that's just false. They ruled out I'm local so glad that you said this because theories, that was not, not my local first ones. Reaction. Sorry, it doesn't rule yeah. out all hidden variables, just those no, operating it does locally. Not at all. In in fact, just to you know make the story more amusing, John Bell was motivated by the fact that David Bohm had written down a non-local hidden variable theory that was very successful. And Bell really liked Bohm's theory, and he asked himself, is it, you know, Bohm's theory is clearly manifestly non-local. Is that a necessary quality, or can we get rid of it? And what you proved is you cannot get rid of it. It's necessary if you want to match the data. Uh, but uh, t uh, uh, again, uh, here, uh, uh, first, uh, uh, sorry, let me return for a brief moment to Niels Bohr. I hope we are both here on the materials side in the sense that what I worry is not so much this direct new age spiritual reappropriation if I were to be a ruler of a Stalinist empire. If you say, as I read somewhere, some Indian idiot, not Native American, India said, oh, but all that Zeilinger and those guys proved is not we Indians know from Upanishad, from Bhagavad, you know, all that bullshit. Even the movie, I haven't seen it, but it didn't prevent me to write a review of it. Oppenheimer goes into this, you know, all those quoting uh, Bhagavad Gita, I'm the destroyer of the world, whatever. So uh, even, even Bohr was not clear here. When he, uh, uh, when he, uh, what's his principle? No, sorry, I'm so confused now. Uh, uh, of uh, complementarity, yeah. He had this tendency to falsely universalize it in a pseudo-spiritualist way. For example, he said, it's not just particles. It's also, he said, uh, to the Bible, then, then wisdom versus knowledge and all that bullshit and so on. So this is where we need, we materialists, intellectual police, no? We need some agency to say, the moment you mention this, do you know what I give you here? One-way ticket, first class to Bulak for 10 years. <laughs> no, but seriously, isn't this, that's why what also quant, why quantum physics interests me. Because precisely because it breaks the confines of our ordinary notion of reality, it is always exposed to this uh, uh, pseudo-spiritualist danger. So my... Uh, 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 my problem here is I read this and uh, I learn also from people like you that that golden era of Copenhagen shut up, don't think, calculate is over. We are returning to what traditionally is called ontological metaphysical questions. My temptation is, and please tell me from what you know, am I totally wrong or not? If I, you know what vacillates me in this Bell's theory, theorem, no? What if this element of maybe even contingency is not the right term? Just this openness, not full determinism and so on. Are we back with many worlds in determinism or do, is this openness of the universe maintained? Wonderful idea for me that, you know, even if you look at details, details, no, it's not. You discover deep, at some point, reality is blank open. I would like, as a philosopher, for non-scientific interest to save this. Hit me. I mean, with I think that uh, two things, you know, your, your, your characterization of Bohr is right on. Uh, not only was his philosophy of quantum mechanics a little bit fuzzy uh, with not defining what he meant by measurement and whatever. But he did, you know, unabashedly connect it to ideas from ancient Eastern wisdom and complementarity. And you already it only Kant in him. Even Eastern wisdom. He was already oh, yes. in death. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> he was. A lot and of not work to anyone's for benefit. our police when we take power. <laughs> Right. 
Oh, right, but the well, determinism yeah. question is a much trickier one because then, I mean, just so the, everyone knows in the background here. So, you know, quantum mechanics came on the scene in the 1920s and 30s with the Copenhagen interpretation and whatever. Um, it was in the 1950s that people like Bohm and Everett finally wrote down 100% physical material versions of quantum mechanics that fit the data completely well. The physics community could not care less. They just ignored it. I know, they they I know. go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you, if you care about this, you're not going to get a job. You'll be kicked out of the field. But, but we wasn't know the you problem can't we, now we say. Wrong also a political one. He was very left-leaning. With he that's was right. Leaning. He was kicked out of the country, not only of the field. Right. Everett left the field ended by up himself. In Brazil, but he was kicked out of the country for a different did. reason. Yeah. Not because of quantum mechanics. <laughs> no, no, because of his point. So, yeah. But, you know, yeah, so there's there and there are still people today um, who will who will be argue in favor of idealism on the basis of quantum mechanics. Isn't there that we have to put consciousness approaching death. Sorry, a little bit. isn't sorry, but Roger Penrose approaching death a little bit. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, a little bit, but at least, yeah. But I, but I think, you know, there are some people who will simply deny the existence of objective reality and put mind and agents at the center of everything. That's what look, they, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's right, maybe it's wrong, but my point is quantum mechanics doesn't force you in that direction. There's perfectly mechanistic versions that fit the data perfectly well. But so, so again, your answer to this mega reproach from Einstein, Jan, Sabine, Kosenfelder, and so on, that quantum mechanics describes, uh, it's very simple reproach, I just repeat it for the viewers, describes a certain universe which is in itself consistent, wave function, blah, blah, but it cannot account in its own terms of the, our ordinary reality measuring and so on and so on in, in, in if i read you correctly many words does this in some sense yes yeah exactly so i think you know you, i forgot you also mentioned determinism which is a crucial point here which again physicists don't agree on so for both hidden variable theories bohm by the waves etc and for many worlds you're in a situation where the underlying equations and dynamics are 100% deterministic. Laplace would have been happy. Laplace's demon could predict everything that happens. But in both theories, there is some epistemic uncertainty. There is some subjective probability that comes in. In the case of hidden variables, it's because you don't know where the hidden variables are. In the case of many worlds, it's because all of these different branches exist and you don't know which branch you are on. So there's the appearance of indeterminism because you cannot, even if you know the wave function of the universe perfectly, you still can't predict the outcomes of your next experiment. So it's a weird in-between ground. 